recording now, uh, recording this now. Uh, so lab six, we did these three files. So you're familiar with these files by now, uh, the product list, the product detail and the contact file. And what we did in lab six that was a little bit different is we went to a fixed width uh, for many of the elements. So we made our, our tables a fixed width, we made our columns a fixed width. And what we notice is when we, um, when we change the uh, the width or the size of the windows, that uh, the elements inside those windows didn't change. So we, when we compress the window, the element just part of it would be lost. Well, we we got a little bit of a change up from that today, and so let me show you the. Um, I better share you my screen so you can see. And so hopefully you can see this now. But what we've got happening today is uh, I've got the three files here. So the files look the same, but they behave slightly differently when we come to compress them. Now, what you'll notice there is I'm extending and compressing the width of that, um, that, that page, but the, it doesn't extend beyond this. So we've got a maximum width set for the, um, well, in this case, we call it a container. Do you notice the gray around the outside? The gray around the outside is because the body uh, tags have been styled to be gray. And then we've got a container inside and the container we've styled to be white. And it's the, the white that uh, the container, the white container that we're gonna be looking at at the moment. So as I compress the window, do you see there that uh, at some point there, you can see that the actual stuff inside the container is compressing. You can see the table compressing and you can also see this other stuff down here, these, these paragraphs are compressing as well. Gee, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but uh, that's what's happening there. So can you see that? That's now it doesn't compress forever, right? It gets to a point and it stops compressing. So how that's actually achieved is we got two things going there. We have a max width for the container and we have a minimum width for the container. And maybe I can show those up. Oh, hopefully I, uh, goodness gracious, I did I close my, um, looks like I did. How many times have I done this? So my apologies, I'm going to stop recording for a second. I'm gonna, okay, so we're back to it now. Um, the files that I wanted to show you in Notepad, and we're, I'm using Notepad, even though I did recommend to you uh, Visual Studio Code because um, we saw what happened in the last test is that uh, Visual Studio Code wasn't available to you. So I want you to get used to, to Notepad as well. Uh, so that first one there, that was the contact support. And what we've done with that, and you can see that here in the CSS, we have a container. If we look at the, and the container, we've made a maximum and a minimum width. And we see the maximum width was 100 picks and the minimum width was um, 500 picks. And that's what gave us that, that phenomena as we saw it. So we can expand it out, but at some point it stops expanding. That's when it gets to 800 picks wide. We can compress it and it will compress. Okay, so there's like, that must be 800 there because it's, it's um, starting to compress at that point. We can compress it and then it stops compressing. And so that would be at 500 picks. And so that's done that way. Um, let's look at this at the, um, so we can't see anything. I'm not sharing this, it says I'm screen sharing. Um, well, can you not see the screen? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. All right because it says I'm screen sharing. Um, so we got a minimum width and we got a maximum width in the container. If we look at the, if we look at the, um, oh yes, for a while there you couldn't see. Yeah, I understand because I had turned it off. I'm sorry, but yeah, so I mean, there's a time delay on these messages, I'm getting that. All right, so um, if we look at the HTML, what we see is we've got a body tag and then we've got a couple of divs or just one div, right? And that, that div represents the container. 
So that's how that is working with the container. And the container, if you look at, you can tell where the container starts because of the colors. I told you about that, right? So the container has got, everything is in white. Whereas the body, we've got this gray color. And then the container has a, a um, maximum and a minimum width. It's got a maximum and a minimum width, but it's not fixed, right? The fix, the elements within the container are able to change their size. And that's done with this percent thing. So if you look at the elements that are there, the main element that's there is the table. And that is uh, giving uh, a width of 100%. So it takes up 100% of the um, of the container and the container can change its size between 500 and 800 picks. So that's the first one. I hope that's all clear to you. That's what's happening there. Now, hopefully this doesn't look too different. All of that code you already have, that'll be in the, distribu in the, di the distribution files, but it's also stuff that you've already seen and you've already got. Uh, we got a couple things there that we've used in the past also. We've got uh, fixed width for these two classes called TF call and, and land call, which um, we've fixed the width there to 150. And you can see that that was for the telephone numbers in these two um, two parts of the, um, it's annoying how, how ah, ah, talk about annoying. That's, uh, that's seriously annoying because now I touched on that and it I must've hit the X. Oh, goodness gracious annoying anyway so where were these uh, right it's here so let me get those again well they're there aren't they and yeah all right so there they are okay contact support yes they're all there so yes so um the landline and the mobile they're fixed and so we see that they're their width doesn't change at all um, through that. And that was achieved by um, this setting the classes up in the TH um, tags, but only not all the TH tags, right? Just these two on the uh, right. And then setting the width to 150. So that separates this column from these two columns. This column, we see that width is able to change. So that though the maximum width of the, um, sorry, the width of the table itself is set as 100%. Uh, with that's 100% within the within the container. So you see the table is 100% within the container, and the container has a maximum and a minimum width. And so that's how that's achieved. I hope that's okay. Any any questions on that? So yeah, let, so let, let okay. So the next the second, just go over this quickly. Uh, the second page. What's happening there is um, we've got two columns set up and uh, we have a width here, which when we change the width, we notice that the elements inside the columns are able to be compressed. So they don't seem to have a fixed width. And the other thing we notice is that the image also is being compressed as we compress the um, the width of the window, the image is changing its size too. Now there will be a limit to that, but um, it is changing its size there. The other thing that we can notice there is that the um, the table, uh, one column of the table seems to be a fixed width, but the other column is being compressed. And of course, there's a limit to that compression because of the size of the fonts, etc. You know, you can only you can only compress the um, element outside of this font so much, and uh, we we get to the point where the where you can't, you just can't make those any smaller. And so it's like that, it's, but it can be compressed to that. So how's that happening? This is the file, which is called the product detail file. So let's have a look at the pro product detail file and see how that's achieved. Okay, so the container, which is all the white stuff there, right? We've set a, a width of that for a hundred, I sorry, for a thousand picks. And then the other elements that we're compressing, the compressed elements, we are we are allowing them to be compressed by using percentages on them. And so, well, we got one heading which is not compressing. That's, uh, sorry, the, the column on our table, the table heading column is not compressing, but the other, the other tables part is compressing. And we can see 
here is where we can see something that's happening. So the image, the image itself can compress. So as we squeeze the element here in which the element, the image sits, then the image can compress. Uh, we see that the this uh, div here is called product photo, and it is set to be 20%. 20% of what? 20% of the element in which it it is um, placed. And so the element in which it is placed is it's directly placed inside the container element. So we have two divs inside that container element, right? And uh, that's directly placed inside those, right? And so what we're saying, if you look at those two divs, they're just here, right? There's a product photo div and there's a product details div. So product photo div holds the image and the product details div holds everything else. So all this stuff, um, all this stuff is the product details and this is the product image. And so what's, what we've said is that the product details, when we squeeze the page, they're going to be allowed to take up 80% of the width of that, of that container, the container that they're in. So as the container is reduced, the product details are reduced and they will always be 80% of the container. And then the, the photo, uh, the, uh, the div holding the photo, when it's compressed, it will uh, always take up 20% of the container. And so that's how that's working. So together, the 20 and the 80 make 100. So it's kind of like the previous one before. The only difference that we haven't sort of talked about there is in the table itself. And uh, what we see in the table is we haven't actually done any styling on the width of the table except for the one um, column, which is the heading column where we set that width to be set to 150 picks. And so this part here should stay at 150 picks. And then we see that happening as we compress it or extend it. It's not actually changing its width, whereas the other part of the table is. All right, so that's two parts there now. Uh, hopefully you can see that. There's not a lot of code that you have to sort of work on there. Uh, really, it's just this, um, the width as a percent instead of as a fixed PX. That would be the difference uh, between this and the one that you did for um, uh, lab six. Now lab, uh, so, so the last one is the product listing. And this one kind of takes a little bit of a different turn that might look familiar to you. And it looks like each of those elements are the same. And that's because they are, they're set up as a class, right? They're set up as a class. And, but uh, as we compress, do you notice that they're not keeping, they're not a fixed size. That's a very big difference between this and lab six. And lab six, if we tried to compress these, what we would have got was we would have got, um, the window just uh, the the elements would have maintained their size and the window would have just closed around them and what we have happening here is actually as we can as we reduce that size the elements fall down onto the next line because uh, there is a sort of a limit to the amount we can compress them pro pro partly to do with the size of the images um, but uh, they can be compressed only so much and that's kind of the limit of the, how much they can be compressed there. But you see that they are compressed. Um, didn't allow H1 to be compressed. That would have been sort of cool, but yeah. Uh, all right, so how is that achieved? Well, do you remember that these are product classes? And so if we look here at the class product, what we see happening is again, we've, we're using a percentage. We're using the percentage 31% because when the when the um, uh, when the container is spread out to take up 100%, when it's allowed to take up 100%, then 31% times three is still less than 100%, and so three of those products can fit along inside the uh, container on one line, beside side by side. There's a little bit of room between them, so that would make up the total of um, 100 if you had your three times 31 is 93 so there's seven percent for these channels and uh, so that oh, goodness gracious 
what did I do with that? <laughs> oh, I, I, um, I, I hit on one strange thing here in the, uh, in the view. Uh, so I can see all of my, oh, uh, I can see all of my non, non-visible sort of things, right? Yeah, they're not. They're usually they're not visible. So I've touched on one of these things. I'm not sure what it is. That's interesting, though. All right. So um, maybe I should close that. Uh, they're all like that. So it is just something here that I've touched. Um. Uh, Maybe if I close them all and re reopen them. So that was product list, right? Um, yeah, it still opens that way. So sorry, I'm not going to try and figure out what I've done. I've, I've, I've touched one of these keys and it's changed the, the, the way it views. So let's open it in a different way because that's kind of distracting. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. When we use visual code, it takes a long time to open up, doesn't it? So there's a benefit of using um, Notepad++. Um, plus plus. It just opens up a lot faster. Okay, so here we go. Here's our product list in a easier to use method. Um, so this will you be familiar with that too, All right? So um, what is it? What else needs to be discussed there? You should be familiar with all of this code because we did that in labs three through four and et cetera. The only sort of change, as I said, is to do with these widths. I think that's about it. Um, notice that the image is set to a width of 100%. That's kind of important because that um, allows the image to sort of, do you see the size of the image is decreasing? It's being controlled. Its size is controlled by the size of the product, um, the product class. And the product class seems to be controlled by the size of the text. We could actually do something to make the text smaller too. Um, there's a there's a way of doing that. We'll look at that in later labs, but we don't want to sort of add too much complexity now. So that's what you've got to do. I hope it, that's all kind of clear. Um, as I said, the container, we're fixing the width to uh, 1000 picks for this particular uh, file, but we're allowing percentages on the, um, on the product uh, element within them. Okay, so why do the images become small? The images are in this um, div called product photo, and the image is styled for size. Uh, the, the image is styled for size as well as the um, the uh, column that it's in is styled for size. So we see that this div here that represents this column width here, okay, and that is set up to be twenty percent of the width of the screen. Um, of, of the width of the window, I should say. So the window, goodness gracious, I hate that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, yeah, this one. The window, uh, we can see we can stretch or we can, uh, we can compress that. The window is the container. And the container is styled here. It is uh, given a maximum width of, um, and notice that's not, a, there's no minimum width set. So the minimum width is gonna be controlled by the, so not, it's not a fixed width. Notice that that's not a fixed width, it's a max width. So we are able to, we are able to compress the container. There's a limit to how much we can compress it because of the size of the text, et cetera. But we can compress it quite a bit. And um, so that's done here with the max width being a thousand. Now back to the image. Why is the image being compressed? Because the image is inside this, um, this element, which is th that I wanna refer to, which is the um, photo, uh, product photo. And that is set to 20%. So this, this, um, this column that it's in can get smaller. It can get smaller and bigger, but it's always going to be 20% of the 
of the width of the container of the container and the container has a maximum width of a thousand okay and so the column i can never get bigger than 200 um, picks wide but it can get smaller when the container starts getting smaller the column starts getting smaller it goes so went from 200 picks to some number smaller than 200 picks probably 100 picks there maybe goes down to 50 or 60 picks all right so that's done by this this 20 percent, but that's not talking about the image that's talking about the column in which the image is um um apart the image itself is styled here now it's set to 100 percent. What, what does that mean that means that it's it can take up and we're only talking about its width there so uh, we haven't mentioned here the um the height the height is set auto um, so what happens is as the image get, as the width gets smaller, the height gets less. And as the width gets bigger, the height gets more. And so, um, but it's set to 100%. What that means is it's going to take up 100% of the capacity that's available to it inside the container in which it sits. And the container in which it sits is the product folder, uh, product photo container. So when we reduce the size of the product photo, the image which is inside it reduces its size as well. And so that's how that's, that's achieved. And the product details, that's referring to this other, this other div, which is the stuff to the right. And you see that in the, um, in the code, product details is everything except the image. So that's all that stuff there. I, did I answer that? I hold, hold that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'll pause.